Now, if you're taking part in dry January, giving up alcohol for a month, that is, then look away now. If you're not, then a glass of wine might be one of the ways you're getting through what's traditionally a tough month. Uh, yes, uh, and it means that global wine markets, well, they've surged over the past few years. Annual sales of wine now topping $342 billion. And one company making the most of that growing market in luxury wine is the glassmaker Riedel. It's the Austrian family who have uh, been around for more than 260 years and produced... 31 million pieces of glassware every year. Yeah, that includes all sorts of things. Wine, glasses, decanters. It now exports to 125 countries right around the world. Maximilian Riedel is Chief Executive and President and joins us now. And it's so lovely to have you on the programme and to have your wine glasses here <laughs> and your decanter. It's a thing of beauty, but explain to me what it's called and why it's called what it is. Well, it's called the Mamba. And uh, for us, decanting is a very important part of celebrating wine, bringing friends and family together and uh, modern wines need a little bit of aeration and this is exactly what this beautiful decanter does pouring the wine into it the wine opens up breathes and gets ready to be consumed see i'm just looking at that wondering how you clean it uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's just me. Um, talk us through this i mean look uh, 260 year old history of the business um, you were involved from the what the age of 18. yes um, you were talk we were all talking earlier about how you come up with new ideas, you come up with ways to get people to keep buying. Uh, and I sort of probably naively said, how can you come up with a new thing as, you know, is there a, such a new thing as a wine glass? But there is, apparently. There is, because our wine glasses are instruments for everybody who enjoys a glass of wine every day, so we hope. And uh, our glasses are fine-tuned towards the DNA of a grape variety. So whenever you fall in love with a new grape, such as Riesling, Chardonnay, and many others, uh, look for a Riedel glass because you get so much more out of the wine. Does the shape of the wine glass change the flavor of the wine? It influences the perception of wine. We cannot be responsible for miracles. We cannot turn a bad <laughs> wine into a good wine. But when you drink it from the proper shaped glass from Riedel, you will get uh, more out of the wine experience because our glasses are developed with the winemakers themselves. And when you put your nose into one of our glasses, you will be amazed what uh, fine nuances you can detect. In it's a shame these are empty, really. <laughs> <laughs> Very much so. Um, and you've sort of declared war on the champagne flute, haven't you? Because uh, everyone will associate the tall, slim glass yeah. with a glass of champagne, but that's not the way to drink it, you don't think? I wouldn't call it a war, I call it more like a crusade of my own because the, one of the very first jobs that I had the pleasure to work in was for a champagne house and I realised that the professionals behind the scenes were actually tasting champagne from a wine glass versus a flute. And the flute to us is more of a marketing, of course we are in the business of wine glasses so we do have a portfolio of flutes but pouring it into a more of a white wine shaped glass all of a sudden you get much more aromatics from the wine itself and uh, this is what what we are looking for i want to talk to you about china because obviously it's very much in the news today china's growth is slowing you obviously do business with china yes. export to china how worried are you about the slowdown in consumer spending and consumption there we've been watching this for quite a while um, over the last i would say five to ten years there have been ups and downs and uh, the last two years were very successful for us because uh, uh, China is not only consuming wine, they're also producing wine. I don't know how many people are aware of this and they're making actually pretty good wine as well. And uh, it, is, it is not yet a household beverage, but it's on the verge to it. So I cannot uh, confirm that for us uh, it has been slowing down. Um, and I talk about your history with the firm. You joined it at 18. Uh, I think you're the 11th generation, yes, is that right? Correct. Yeah, uh, as boss. Was there, any, uh, uh, was there ever an alternative for you? Were you always going to be in, in this business, given that everyone before you had done it? I think it was quite challenging for my parents to make it <laughs> exciting, because who wants to sell a glass? But our glass is more than that. Uh, you wanted it, to be a Formula One driver, didn't you? Uh, correct, correct. What happened to that dream? Um, you could have it's still out there. Glasses. It's still out there. You could have had that champagne dream. bottle. Yes, true, true. No, but uh, I think it was the right decision for me to go into that business. Uh, mm -hmm. Family business always come with some weight on your shoulders, but I was prepared by my parents for that task. And uh, being now uh, over 40, I know uh, bringing up my own kids, how difficult it is to excite your kids. Uh, especially to maybe join the firm, but mm. I will try to do my best. I don't want to be caught the last. <laughs> <laughs> Maximilian Riedel, it's so lovely to have you on. Appreciate Thank you for bringing your glasses and your mamba as well. Thank you so much. Nice yeah. to see you. Thanks very much.